another stay in Parliament because uh, we may see a house divided along strong lines in the next 48 hours unless government wins the support of the NDC members of Parliament. The majority side will be hoping to push through a one billion loan facility believed to be critical in bringing some immediate relief to the current economic challenges that we're facing. Key NDC members, including the 2020 flag bearer for the NDC, John Romani Mahama, have insisted that the loan should not be approved. Also the reason why we've insisted on effective scrutiny of the economic and financial decisions of this government at, the, at this time, especially in Parliament. We do not believe that the existence of crisis permits even more reckless decision making. All decisions and policy choices made at this critical juncture could offer relief or could exacerbate our problems and make recovery extremely difficult. Well, uh, we'll be uh, speaking to Isaac Ophir Jay shortly with our research desk to give us uh, more on the figures. Uh, but first, uh, let's hear from Professor John Gachi, Dean, University of Cape Coast uh, School of Business, joins us uh, now via Zoom. Thank you so much, Doc, for your time. So here we are. Uh, we understand a crunch meeting is underway in Parliament already, trying to reconcile the data and the figures um, across the aisle. But for you, what should we be on the lookout for as Ghana goes in for this uh, syndicated loan? Well, I think it is important at this crucial time uh, to operate in such a way that there is some level of collaboration so that any decision taken to go in for such a loan uh, will be purely to save the country from collapse. Uh, it is also important that uh, Parliament is meeting, and I believe the two sides are meeting on this matter, uh, so that it doesn't look like uh the problem we are facing uh the government alone think that it can't uh wave its way through but it need the collaboration of others uh to do so that is the first thing the second thing that uh, during this crucial moment if we want to go in for some fund uh or loan to salvage the situation somehow to avoid the collapse of the system then the, 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 the nature of the credit facility should be such that we have a moderated interest rate. Uh, we, do not, we are not encumbered by restrictive covenant enshrined in the loan agreement. Uh, that is very important. And we also need to be respecting uh, our budgetary procedures. Uh, if you have 750 million uh, dollars being what is earmarked to be procured. Uh, you need to convince parliamentarians beyond doubt that one billion should be the case. And my understanding looking at some of the loan uh, components show that the interest rate uh, on some part of the loan uh, it's, it's, it's difficult to bear at this point yeah, in but, but, time. But we're helpless, isn't it? Uh, we don't have the fiscal space. So if there's someone coming through for us at this moment, a very crucial moment to you, the experts say, we should go in for anything at all that comes in handy, right? No, we can't go in for anything, especially when the 750 has some moderated interest rate and the conditions attached to it are... Uh, is it, well understood, but the 750 million, uh, that is what is the problem. It has a restrictive covenant. Uh, the interest rate is harsh, and it seems to be a new addition to what is earmarked to be borrowed. Uh, if you do that, uh, it means that the, the kind of attitude that led to uh, over borrowing, uh, and then allowing interest costs to be a threat to the finances of the country is being promoted again, and that should be discouraged. And I believe if they are able to discuss these issues and uh, settle on what should be accommodated, uh, we, sh we are good to, to go. Uh, 
Prof, if you could just hold on for me briefly, let's bring in Isaac Ajay with our research desk. For those of you who are wondering what it is that um, John Romani Mahama has been talking about in terms of the uh, insurance package uh, and also what uh, Prof was just talking about, Isaac, break it down for us. The former president talks about some 250 and also 750 million components of this deal. What more are we learning about that? Kindly unmute for me so I can uh, hear you. Yeah. Yes. Right. Anyway, yes. So the total amount we are expecting is actually two billion US dollars, but we need the first tranche is one billion dollars as soon as possible uh, because of the dark situation we find ourselves in. And so the, the former president spoke about uh, two components, which the um, first one is the $750 million, and the second is $250 million. Now, the $750 million we are expecting will be from the African Export Import Bank, uh, which they will give us $750 million. And then the $250 million is what we call the syndicated loan. Syndicated because it's coming from a group of banks, at least three banks coming together. So we know the Iran Metan Bank, which mm. is the, the London branch, and right. also have Standard, Standard Chartered Bank, and also the Standard Bank for South Africa Limited, also coming together as you know, a dedicated group to give us the $250 million. Now, if you combine these two uh, components, that would give us the first one that we are looking for, that is the $100 billion you know, dollars that Ghana is looking for to show up the budget and also to boost. Uh, the and also help with other okay, so so that's the so so I guess that that's the essence of, of of the loan. But then, why are we having such a huge component of that loan, um, part of the repayment going into insurance packages as well? Well, it's said it's a non-concessional loan. Another reason why the minority yeah, why is it non-concessional because you are getting this loan at the market rate and then the the conditionality that has me will not be that modest like it is from an IMF program. The great period is also short. And so it will come with sort of like an sum of terms that you have to find yourself in when you go for that zone. And then, just like you are saying, it's coming with the market, meaning that if the market is 13%, you're paying 13%, 15, you're paying 15. And it's not like the IMF loan that we are looking for somewhere around $2 billion that you know, we know will come at the top mm. rate and then we'll be given you know, a long rate period to pay back. Anyway, uh, Kofi, I'm grateful. Prof, you're back. I just want to gain your understanding into the issue about the non-concessional loans. Uh, is it the case that it's always injurious to any country that goes in for it? Not necessarily. Uh, the bond that we have been issuing is part of non-concessionary loan comes with commercial interest rate. Uh, it doesn't come with some of these uh, restrictive covenant and conditions uh, that is being discussed. So the fact that it's non-concessionary does not mean that it should come with uh, unbearable conditions uh, that uh, is, is not attractive. Uh, so being non-concessionary is not a guarantee to approve that loan. Mm. We need to work at trying to reduce the restrictive covenant surrounding uh, the package. Uh, if not so, uh, it will uh, create uh, other problems for the countries. So, so what's your expectation uh, from the minority especially, because they are serving notice that they may block the steel uh, would you uh, urge them to at least give some level of an allowance to uh, just allow government to get some funding to run its uh, operations? Well, I think there are some questions that ought to be answered. Of course, um, if government is indicating to us that they want to take about $2 billion from IMF, and you are going to take $2 billion uh, through non-concessionary means, then uh, why do we need the IMF for? So all those things ought to, ought to be clarified. Uh, we, I also think that we should be discussing the $750 million uh, that has uh, uh, conditions well accommodated and the rate of interest uh, well um, uh, uh, acceptable. And that is what I believe 
we should be discussing and not the addition of the 250. That seemed to be uh, very harsh towards the country, especially where we are now. I believe there should be some discussion uh, among parliamentarians and especially uh, from the perspective of the majority and minority to come to a deal to salvage the country. And the idea should be to salvage the country and not to undo one another uh, in order to score a goal. And that is what I will advise. But we shouldn't say that we're in a very difficult time and uh, give ourselves to anything. Interested, you can check out the latest on myjoyonline.com. Uh, we're getting indications that our debt risk position is not something to write home about. So you're, you're alarmed about that as well, right, Prof? Yes, uh, if you are talking about debt to GDP ratio of about 85%. See, when Japan and Co are talking about debt to GDP ratio of uh, over 200%, it's because Japan is, is very clear that its exports uh, is not compromised. Uh, most of it that are internal mm. and uh, the, the other vulnerability ratios are good. But our case, the debt to GDP ratio is alarming. And uh, the, um, the amount of interest we are paying as a percentage of our GDP is escalating as a percentage of our tax revenue right. uh, is threatening our export revenue to external obligation to external creditors is alarming. Uh, so no ratio is in our favor. Uh, therefore, we don't have any buffer in terms of the vulnerability indicators. We are precarious in all these areas. That is why it is alarming. Hmm. Anyway, we'll see what government will do about it. And also, we'll get back to you once that meeting is done. But for now, we're grateful for your time, Professor John Gachi, Dean, uh, University of uh, Cape Coast Business School. Uh, let's wrap up with Isaac of EAJ. I want to that there could be an alternative uh, from the euro bond market. Um, Kofi, what are we finding out finally? I believe that so the, you know, the alternative would have been to go to the euro bond market. But currently, when we saw the recent coming down, we've lost access to this market. And so right from 2013 to 2021, except for, aside from 2017, where we did go to the market, each of these years, we been to the euro bond market. Mm. They did take the, the Akupado government for instance, they did the euro bond market for about four times and raised up about about eleven point zero to five billion US dollars from the market. And you know, the last time they went to the euro bond market, they became somewhere around three billion dollars. And so it means that if they had not lost access to the euro bond market, you know, that would have been the best alternative. They wouldn't be chasing after some of these indicated loans and then uh, you know other you know, loans that will come from some multinational organizations. organization. But the assets, they have been in the European market almost every year since they took office from 2018, where it was 2 billion, 2019, 3 billion, 2023 billion, and 2020, and uh, also 3 billion. Then 2022, due to the downgrade and other things, they lost access to the financial market. And now they are taking after, you know, this um, indicated loans and other yeah. assets. Anyway, we'll see how that will pan out. Isaac Kofi AJ is with our research desk here at Join.